This is Pocket Watching with JT, the call-in financial talk show focused on helping you get your money right. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Are you deep in debt, living paycheck to paycheck and looking for a way out? Call Pocket Watching with JT, the financial advisor for the people. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Pocket Watchers, welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am certified financial planner Jason Thornton. I am a financial advisor that specializes in tax and wealth planning for my clients. But on YouTube, I react to your money questions and scammer news. First off, let me give a big shout out to the over 92,000 of you who have already hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. As you make your way into the live stream, go ahead, hit that like button, share this content. Let's have some fun tonight. Now, tonight... Tonight, we're going to talk about pink sauce and the pink sauce lady. Now, let me be honest. I am not an expert on the pink sauce. It was you, the subscribers, the pocket watchers, who said, JT, I want to hear your reaction about what happened to the pink sauce lady. So you sent me some links, you sent me some videos, and I had to. Get up to date with this whole story about the pink sauce lady. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what pink sauce is or the pink sauce lady, I believe she goes by the name Chef P. I'm going to show you a quick video to get you up to speed, and then I will be back. All right, so let's take a look and see who this is. P in the building in South Florida. (laughs) Miss Pink Sauce herself. Everybody's like, Pink Sauce, Pink Sauce, Pink Sauce, Pink Sauce, right? Billions of views across social media. And move over ketchup and mustard. There's a new condiment craze this summer, and you might mistake it for Pepto-Bismol. It is pink, and social media is filled with people putting it on just about everything. But Stephen Fabian reports there's just one little problem. No one's quite sure what's in it. It's the pink sauce everyone's talking about. It looks like Pepto-Bismol, and the colored condiment went viral after this woman posted video of her eating it with fried chicken. Mm. People across the USA can't wait to see what it tastes like. It tastes good. It's like a sweet seasoned ranch. That's what it tastes like to me. But since it's made with oil, it's a lot more like buttery and oily than ranch. Look at this! So what's in the pink sauce? The ingredients include sunflower seed oil, honey, garlic, milk, spices. But what gives it that vibrant color? It's dragon fruit. It's sweet, it's tangy, it's a little spicy. I spoke with the creator, Chef P. What do you use pink sauce for? Is it a dipping sauce? It can be used as a dipping sauce, a salad dressing. It can be used uh, as a topping on pasta, pizza, rice. Pink sauce is also generating quite a bit of mystery. For one thing, the packaging. This customer says it came like this in the mail, in a Ziploc bag that leaked. No, no ma'am, we're not trying this. Look at this, it stinks. Chef P has changed the packaging, but there is also confusion over the nutritional facts. The label shows a bottle of pink sauce has 444 servings. Oops, it's actually 444 grams. That comes to 30 servings. That's why we paused the production and we're printing new labels. Does pink sauce need to go in the refrigerator or it can or can it sit out on your shelf? Okay, so that was another typo. So it says, please refrigerate. Everything has rolled out extremely fast. Mistakes happen. But eventually she got rescued by a man named Dave, who has his own line of gourmet sauces. 
And so he took over the entire pink sauce product, even giving it shelf space in Walmart stores all around the country. I'm the creator of the famous pink sauce. And yes. I mean, ultra viral moment. You had everybody try your pink sauce. I mean, you've done press runs, been on national TV, talking about your pink sauce. You've had a, a, a heavy amount of backlash and scrutiny as well uh, concerning your pink sauce. And, you know, as we saw, it kind of looked like you were on the up and up. And unfortunately, um, you went live, I think the day before yesterday with the GoFundMe saying that um, you are now facing eviction. You don't have food in your house. Your phone is off right now, so you're at a Starbucks just doing this interview, and you don't have any money to your name. And you allege that the company who you um, decided to sign a contract with to market and distribute uh, your pink sauce, which I have here, okay? All right, I got it, yes, pink sauce. Um, they sent you a negative uh, report of a negative balance of $2 that your sauce, uh, you know, they claim that your sauce made. And this is what they had to say. Dave's Gourmet has adhered to the terms of the agreement with Miss Shaw. We disagree with Miss Shaw's allegations. Dave's Gourmet has paid Chef P over $120,000 to date, and it continues to make all payments as due and on time based upon the terms of the contract. We've offered to reimburse Ms. Shaw for her lawyer's time to go over the terms of the agreement and how it relates to the payments that were made to Ms. Shaw. She's indicated that she's open to an amicable resolution of the dispute and the parties are in discussions. They also spoke to Insider and even sent them proof of the payments that they've been sending to Chef P and her business. Insider wrote, Insider reviewed screenshots of bank statements shared by Dave's Gourmet, reflecting payments it says it made to Shaw as well as a company called Flavor Crazy Inc., which is registered in her name. There were a total of 12 transactions in the screenshot. The payments began on August 9, 2022, according to the documents provided by Dave's, and the latest transaction occurred on August 17 of this year. To believe that Chef P spent so that money in such a short period of time is absurd. She claimed that she only has a few dollars left in her bank account and is unable to provide her children with food or school materials. What happened to all that money? All right, so, so let's have a conversation. As you see, the link, the link to join and call into the show is pinned to the chat. But let's have a conversation real quick, because a lot of you guys, you sent me this link, you sent me this story, and you wanted to get my reaction. Now. Before I give you my reaction, we have to have an adult conversation about constructive criticism, okay? Constructive criticism. See, I'm of a certain age that I don't understand you people on the internet. I'm going to be honest. Remember, I'm I'm a cornball. I'm a financial advisor. I don't have drip. I don't have swag. Uh, I didn't grow up the way that apparently many of you on the internet, the way you guys grew up, right? I grew up in a different way. I grew up where if someone gave you constructive criticism, they weren't hating on you, right? And see, once again, this is the disconnect between me and many of you who claim that you rep the culture. See, in my world, if someone is actually giving you an honest critique of what you are doing, what your goals are, whatever it is, that's not hating. It may be something that will actually improve your overall performance. Because you didn't see in that video, but trust me, you can go out to YouTube and find all the other videos where many people, was trying to give constructive criticism to this lady, to Chef P. Chef P said people are hating on her. And for whatever reason, a large amount of, I guess, unknown black superheroes online, you flew in to her rescue. While the customers who actually got the pink sauce in bottles that looked deformed, 
when they would make a video or a post online talking about how bad the product was and how they were disappointed in the product, many of you, once again, you unknown black superheroes, online warriors, flew in the Twitter with your Twitter thumbs already, talking about how they were hating on a small black business. They're hating on this woman. Well, <clears throat> maybe you guys went to the Boyce Watkins School of Business critiquing, but if someone is giving their honest opinion on a particular thing, that is not hate. That's their opinion. See, here's the problem. When you present something in the public, whatever it is, if you present your business idea to the public, if you present your new music song, if you're a rapper or R&B artist, you, you, you upload it, right? Whatever it is, your fashion design, I don't care what it is. When you publish something online, your goal, based on what I'm believing, your goal is to try to get as many eyeballs on it as possible, right? Many of you will say, I'm trying to go viral, right? You'll say this. You are making every attempt to bring as many eyeballs to the thing that you're trying to promote on your platform. But you can't have everything you want. See, there's two sides to the coin. If you want to get your idea your product, your service, your YouTube content. If you want to get it in front of as many people as possible and you're looking to find your tribe, your audience, who's going to appreciate what it is that you're doing, you have to be aware that there's going to be people who don't appreciate what you're doing, that your particular content is not what they like. And they're going to make a comment about why they don't like it. Now, you've got two options. You can take the criticism and say, oh, well, maybe I need to change it up a little bit, right? Or you can just realize, well, the person who made that comment, they're not really my target audience. I'm not trying to sell my service or product or whatever it is. That's not my target audience. They don't get it because it was not designed for them and you keep it moving. You don't call them a hater. You just keep it moving because you realize it was not made for them. The problem today is it doesn't matter who it is or what they say. If you are not a cheerleader for black excellence, you are a hater. That's not the case. The problem with the pink sauce, outside of the fact that I would never eat anything like that, because like I said, it looked like Pepto-Bismol. Like there's no way I would buy it. But I'm not making reaction videos about the Pepto-Bismol sauce just based off the Pepto-Bismol look, right? That's not what I do. So it doesn't matter. She wasn't making it for me. But you guys, you wanted me to react based on the fact that not too long ago, she was online stunning on her haters, right? She was stunning on the haters. She had her pink sauce in Walmart. I believe she was bragging that there was over 200,000 bottles of pink sauce sold. So she's stunning on her haters, big timing. And then about a month or so later, she has a GoFundMe up. And she's complaining about how she was broke. She did not have enough money to feed her children. I believe she said her mother was giving her $20 a day to live on. Now, there's a particular thing that I want to talk about as to why this happens, because this is not the very first time that this has happened before. This happens time and time again with all of you uh, girl bosses and all you brothers who are CEOs of your last name, all of this stuff. This happens over and over again. Now, before I give my final point and I start bringing up you callers, 
I want to show y'all a video because when I saw the story of the pink sauce lady, it reminded me of something that I saw and I studied when I was in business school. There was another person that was somewhat similar to Chef P, a black person who was really good at selling their product, really good at promoting and marketing their product, but they were not business minded. They did not have the business skills to actually be the big boss CEO that they wanted to be. And because of their lack of business ability, they lost everything. So I'm going to show you guys this video and I will be right back. This incredibly delicious cookie without taking one big bite. He was the, the best pitch man possible and we knew he would go out there and sell it for all he was worth. I'm aboard this delicious space chip. He was totally famous Amos. He lived, ate, and breathed famous Amos. He was great at selling cookies and himself, but he floundered when it came to running his company. Maybe I did know more about the cookie, but I know anything about business. He is the original cookie king who turned himself into a brand name with his aunt's recipe and his own ingenuity, only to lose it all. Oh, dear, thank you. Good to see you. Famous Amos had mastered being a star, but the cookie company Wally had built would soon crumble around him. I'm aboard this delicious space chip, morning, noon, and night. By 1985, Famous Amos was a household name, but the company he created was falling apart. Famous Amos cookies had been cash poor from the beginning. Wally had underestimated how much money it would take to run the business, and paying bills had always been difficult. We were buying our chocolate chips from a foreign company, and uh, if we didn't have a check there on time, they wouldn't ship chocolate chips. And I remember many an evening that I went to the local supermarket and cleaned off the shelves. Amos had been so wrapped up in promoting his product that he hadn't paid enough attention to his day-to-day -day operations. He was the promoter excellent, did whatever had to be done, never said no to anybody, was where he was supposed to be on time, and then he was trying to run a company at the same time. Well, it just doesn't work that way. Oh, dear, thank you. Good to see you. When I started Famous Amos, I knew that I wasn't a businessman. I mean, I knew that I was a promoter. I just got full of myself, I guess, <laughs> and started, you know, <clears throat> I wasn't listening to people that were working with me, wasn't taking their advice, and because I was becoming Famous Amos. <laughs> Amos was forced to sell part of his company to stay afloat. Over the next three years, he brought in three different investors, but none of them could turn the business around. With each new owner, Wally lost more of his share of the business until his equity was reduced to zero. His role in the company was minimized as well. Then in 1988, a company called the Shansby Group bought famous Amos and repositioned the cookie, changing it from a specialty item to a lower priced product. The concept worked and sales soared from $6 million a year to over 80 million. Famous Amos Cookies was finally thriving, but its founder was not, and he knew he was no longer wanted. In fact, the company was planning for his departure. They launched another cookie company called Wally Amos Presents Chip and Cookie in November 1991. There was only one problem. Amos had signed away the right to use his name and likeness in the food industry several years earlier, and now the Shansby Group was suing him. Famous Amos was suing Wally Amos. It was almost like I was suing myself. It was the strangest feeling, you know, that this company that I started is now suing me. All right, so as I said before, this is a story that we see time and time and time again. Many of you who believe that you're these great businessmen and businesswomen, in reality, you are good promoters. 
You are good marketers. You do not have the business knowledge or the infrastructure or even the funding to run a business properly. Now, I'm not shaming you. The point I'm trying to make is you're in too much of a rush. You're trying to rush and rush to be this big superstar businessman, a businesswoman. In reality, it takes time. If you have great skills in promoting and marketing, that means you need to hire on a staff that's going to take care of the other stuff, right? And as they help you, you have to start learning. Because if you leave everything, all of the real business to other people, you will most likely get robbed. So as you start to become a bigger brand, as you start to bring on real business-minded people, you also need to be studying yourself to know if you're being robbed by your bookkeeper or not. We love Flash. We want to stun on our haters. We want to pull up to whatever place in the most expensive car, wearing the most expensive clothes. All of those things are distractions, right? Distractions. You, no matter how great of an idea that you have, if you are not willing to put in the work and take the time that it actually takes to be successful in business, you will always lose because business is not a friendly sport. Business is a contact sport. You are competing against everyone else. And if they spot a weakness, you will get got every time. But all right, so listen, I may be wrong. I want to hear from you guys. As you see, there is a link pinned to the top of the chat. Hit the link. Come on up. Don't worry about the camera because you will not be on screen. Audio only, but I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about the pink sauce lady going from sugar to crack, being on top of the world, viral, billions of views, everybody wanting to eat the pink sauce, I guess. Then ending up in a situation where she says she's going to get evicted from her, her apartment. She's living on $20 a day and she's having issues with the business partners that she got to deal with. How does that happen? It comes out of ego. It comes out of the fact that you tr you're trying to do more than you're capable of doing and not being willing to listen to advisors. We all have advisors. I have advisors. I have people I listen to. I'm not an expert in everything. The things that I don't know, I seek counsel. I'm willing to be successful in steps because it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Those of you who think that you're not successful because you're not a millionaire at age 21 or you're not a multimillionaire at age 35, you're not driving around in $250,000 cars at the age of 40, you have the wrong mindset. That's probably why you're not successful yet. It comes in steps. Just be patient. But here we go. Let's bring up some callers. We got some callers here. We got the Warriors. I think here, uh, I, I, I hope I'm saying your name right. Yeah, it looks like yeah, we got hey, what's we up? got the wars in the middle. So, so uh, caller, um, what do you think about the pink sauce and the chef P? I believe her name is. Am I am I wrong? Is was her downfall because of the haters, or could her downfall be that she was not properly ready to run a business and she was not even able to take simple criticism from her actual paying customers. But I could be wrong. What do you think? All right. So first of all, I want to thank you for bringing me up and allowing me to speak on your platform. Sure. Um, you know, first off, I don't think you're wrong at all, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, people are actually fortunate enough to have you uh, because this is important. Um, first of all, um, the product was rushed to market yeah. uh, because it went viral. And I think that uh, she could have built upon the viral, uh, you know, she could have had a little countdown. She could have worked with these bigger mm -hmm. companies uh, to standardize the product. You know, oh sometimes it was neon pink. Sometimes it was white. And that's an issue, you know. Um, uh, secondly, even though there was people going viral, 
uh, for challenging her product. I actually don't believe that these people were hating because I actually watched a lot of it. Mm -hmm. uh, these are people who were kind of like giving her advice. Now, of course, mm -hmm. you know, because it's online, you know, there's always an element of people wanting to, you know, go viral off of anything. You know, that's a big issue. Right. Um, but I also don't think it's too late. It might be too late because she went public disrespecting the company and calling them out. Um, right. But, I, you know, this is just a, a, a thing that people go through who do business. Uh, you know, I'll be real. Like, um, I think I'm a pretty, pretty good at business. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. But when I started my film company, I made sure I brought in someone who was better uh, because it's just something I, I couldn't manage. It's money that I've never seen before. Right. You know, one time I was pitching a film to someone. I was way out of my element, just to be honest with you. And it's just me being real. You know, he says, how much is this going to cost? I said, 200000 an episode. He says, nah, it's too little. He knew I, he knew I was out of my element because I thought 200000 was a lot of money. Right, right. And he says, no, no, something like this is History Channel stuff. Because I was doing a documentary. He says, no, no, it'll cost about $2 million an episode. And, I'll, <laughs> and let me tell you, I went to license some um, stuff out. It costs a thousand dollars a second at a minimum of thirty seconds usage. So, and I'm saying all of that to say that I knew that this was out of my element. The right. businesses I, I was in was it was actually in financial products and insurance before I got into film. Mm -hmm. um, but that's different. It's a different world. I mean, in many ways, um, it's smaller because it's on a scale. Like I, I, I worked for, I'm not gonna say the company I worked for, but. I work for a company that everyone knows about, you know, but uh -huh. you know, these companies are managed by franchisees. So you're dealing gotcha. with your neighborhood. You, you're going to say it's very local. So yeah. I, I say that to say that this is an issue that a lot of people have. This isn't a black issue. This isn't a white issue. This is a mm -hmm. cross racial lines, uh, belief lines. Um, I think the biggest issue with her, honestly, was her. And I hate yeah. to say that, uh, but, but, mm -hmm. uh, as you know, sometimes your, your strength could be your weakness. And her strength was that she was she has the personality to go viral. But mm -hmm. today we see this a lot. We see people who are just personalities and then companies say, hey, push this product because you're a personality. You have five million right. followers. Here's a product and uh, a product is important. And she put her name on that product, which is even, you know, even crazier because now her name is associated so, you know, I'll wrap it up to say that you're not hating. In mm -hmm. fact, I think that if anything people can learn from this is that do like you said, like, see, for me, the money that comes into the business don't belong to me. Mm. Uh, that comes into, you know, my, my company. It doesn't belong right. to me. I'm, I, I'm still an employee of the company in many ways mm -hmm. uh, because like, you know, it's only two people, but every job I take, I have to hire people. So I have to hire a crew. <laughs> right. 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 So that, right. You know, he's got that, that, that it's tough, man. You know, because like, I gotta, I gotta pay for lunch. Uh, you know, people don't think about that gas. Um, so mm -hmm. there's expenses that's uh, unaccounted for that. I also don't think that she was taking advantage. Um, take, uh, she was thinking about, uh, and then I just think that she spent a lot of money on hair clothes, um, and not shaming right. her, but if you come across $120,000 in a short period of time, if you never have money like that, um, yeah, yeah. But also uh, to wrap it up, I also don't believe she's broke. That's the last thing I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, God bless you, man. I love your show. I just started watching it, but uh, I'm a big fan because I don't like Rifter. So let's get it. My brother, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think I think her downfall was also her enablers. Right. And I, I, I want to touch on this. All of you out there, and probably not many of who, you who are watching, but in general, if you go to some of the posts on Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or X or whatever the hell it's called now, you will see a lot of people were coming in with the Superman cape on saying, hey, don't you criticize this small black business. When you saw the video of this pink sludge coming out of the bottle like there's no way like how do you defend that how do you say oh well it's a small business you know small black business you gotta give it the opportunity give it an opportunity what if your child ingested this sludge and got sick 
Are you going to be like, oh, it's a small black business. You got to chalk that one up. Take that on the chin, right? But, but I hope you got good health insurance. Nah, like, no, there's, there is a responsibility of the business owner making sure that they look at every bad possibility that can happen and think, am I safeguarding against it? You don't just run out like a child, not caring about anything and just say, oh, I want to make sure that I cash in on a viral moment. There were many opportunities that she had to slow down, but her ego and the enablers who are saying, go girl, go no matter what, is what put her in the position, personally, I think, where she is right now. Oh, we got we got debt free dad in the building. Let me bring up, let me bring up debt free dad. What's going on, bro? What's going on, bro? How you doing? I'm good, man. Hey, I know you you touched on this story before, so I want to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, you know it, it's funny because there's it, a few things that play in this story. I think the first thing is we don't put enough respect on W two employment. We just have this culture of be your own boss, do this, do that. I know a lot of people who are very wealthy, and most of them, I would say probably 90% of them, W-2 employees. And, and as somebody who started his own law practice out of law school, hey, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I realized I was a great lawyer, but I'm a terrible businessman, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hunting down clients for money getting paid and stolen watches i don't want to be a part of that so 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 you have to know where you fit in you have to put some respect on w2s and as for her very few people get two opportunities uh a two bites at the apple of starting a business she had one swipe at the apple when she was doing it on her own then she kind of fumbled and bumbled her way into a, a brand type of sponsorship thing. But when we step yeah, no, back no, and look no, at no, no. that's a great point. Let's let's pause right there because I, I don't think everyone who's not familiar with this story, they may not get what you're saying. Because this is a right, right. point. She had a viral moment. She got millions and millions, maybe billions, I don't know, but millions of views on TikTok and other uh social media platforms. And she built up a lot of hype and a lot of buzz for this pink dipping sauce. That, that's, you know, uh, you know number one. That's attempt number one. She does it on her own. She's mixing this stuff up in her kitchen, allegedly, on her own. And it goes out, and it goes out horribly, right? Many of these bottles and these reactions look unsanitary. One person, I believe, said there was glitter in it. It, it looked horrible. And instead of really having true reflection, really looking at it and, and asking herself, what can I do to make this better? She claimed that, you know, she's being attacked by haters and people are trying to capitalize on this moment. She got called into some low budget TV, uh, uh, daytime TV show where the host is actually enabling her even more, claiming it. yes, the haters are the issue, not you. Right, right. That's a tip one. That should have that would have killed most businesses right there. Then a savior comes in, right? A, a zaddy, white zaddy comes in, <laughs> and he he says, "Listen, you created something viral. There's an opportunity here. I have a company where we actually do legitimate sauce business. We are going to partner with you in some way, shape, or form, and I'm going to standardize the process." of making this pink sauce. And I'm also going to get this pink sauce in Walmart. That's attempt number two. Most people don't get one. A lot of people don't get two. And because of her, I guess her thirst for success, because remember, we got to shine on the haters at all costs. We must always shine on haters. Instead of thoroughly looking through the contract, understanding what was in the contract and how she would get paid. She saw an opportunity. I'm going to stunt on the haters. She signed on the dotted line. She got $120,000.
But now she claims that she's broke. She didn't understand what was in the contract. She's not getting the uh, payments that she believes that she should get. But honestly, based on the contract, she's probably getting exactly what she's supposed to get based on the contract. And if the contract is bad, once again, that's on her because she's the girl boss that should have known what she was doing. But go right ahead. Right. And, but it's, it's funny because we see this all the time. I think that the, the best takeaway from this is sometimes owning 100 percent of nothing isn't a smart thing. It's a lot better if you have 2 percent ownership of something that's actually worthwhile. If you don't have the infrastructure, don't move. And, and, and we see this with all these years. I mean, black folks out here drinking Ciroc thinking, did he own it? And he doesn't own it because he was a spokesperson. He was the spokesperson, the face, the black face they put out in front to get the black dollars. So we got to be really cautious of the moves we make and realize ownership isn't everything. A hundred percent of nothing is nothing. You know what I mean? So that's all I got to say, man. All right, my brother. Thank you so much. Y'all go check out Debt Free Dad on YouTube. He is an attorney. He talks about you know, obviously his lawyer reaction to things and also finance stuff. Y'all go check out Debt Free Dad. But he made a great point about Diddy and Ciroc. See, I, I don't drink alcohol. Once again, I'm a lame. You know, I, I don't have drip. Uh, I don't even drink alcohol, nor have I ever smoked a cigarette or, uh, uh, or a blunt. You know, that's just me. I'm lame. But I do recall how, you know, all of the people with the drip were so proud of being able to raise up your Ciroc bottles and talk about this is black excellence only to find out later that Diddy never really owned Ciroc. Diddy was probably a high paid spokesperson. And now he's upset that Ciroc or the, the company that really owned Ciroc wasn't really, you know, promoting it the way that he thought it should be promoted. But yet y'all need to go check out Tone Talks on YouTube. He went in depth on this story, Diddy didn't even put up a lot of money in it to claim that he had equity. He had opportunities to put real money into Ciroc. Based on the evidence and the information that uh, Tone was able to present, he had opportunities to really invest in Ciroc, and he didn't, right? So all this Black excellence and stuff like that, y'all have to have logic over your feelings. Your feelings are getting you deep in debt. Your feelings have you fighting for people who don't care about you. You first have to be right. After you're right, then you can add on the spice. But you can't you can't be wrong and be like, oh, but they black. You, you're just gonna make yourself look stupid. But you know, once again, I'm the cornball, so I don't know anything. Let me bring up Ariel. We got Ariel, you're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going on? Ariel, going once. Twice. Yo. There we go. All right, we got Ronnie. Ronnie, let me try. Nope, Ronnie, you have bad reception. Can't help you out, Ronnie. Uh, we got the lead investor. The lead investor, you're live on the air. What's going on? What's going on, JT? I'm good, man. What, what do you think about the pink sauce and Chef Pie? Okay, there's two sides of it really quick. There's two sides. Okay. So you have the people you say that are the haters. And some of some of the people, they are. But here's the biggest, here's the, my biggest issue with us as black people. So I'm not going to say culture. I'm going to call it out. I'm talking about black people. Mm -hmm. We do not have the proper business acumen to run businesses. That's number one. Number two, I've noticed this because I always try to support black businesses. We let the standard down when we're dealing with our own people. And I've tried my best to tell people they get upset with me when I say, well, I'm not going to support this business. And I said, well, because when you run a business, you have to know you have, you have to know your customer and know your customer base. And I know some people say, okay, it's a small business. Just, you know, don't, don't, don't bash them. But like you said, some of the product was defective and it could have made someone sick. And I think someone else spoke to this, uh, spoke to this point and said, Hey, 
um, you tried to scale this business too fast. You trying to get you you trying to you trying to get up there way too fast. I think you need to slow down because I'm a W two guy myself. But what what I'm learning about business, most of what I've learned about business by watching YouTube, some of the good guys, is by investing. And now that's how I've learned about business. And I think we as black people need to take more uh, time to learn more about business and not just run out here with products and things of that nature that 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 are not yet necessarily proven. So mm -hmm. I, some people are hating because some people probably didn't even buy the product and they just laughing the girl to shame, you know, and, I, and, and be, be before, before you brought this, <laughs> brought this up, I didn't know anything about pink sauce because I'm not on TikTok myself. I'm a little older, right. so I'm not really into the TikTok and things of that, that nature. But mm -hmm. I think we just, as a people, I think we just need to, you know, if you, okay, um, with the Tref thing, and I'll bring this in just really quick. Some of the people who were at the meeting, they said, yeah, I didn't even invest in the fund. I'm like, well, dude, why are you even here? <laughs> you know, I get the people who invested, you know, they have a what they call a vested interest. That's what a vested interest means. Why are you even here? Now, I don't, I don't know what's going on with the fund. I didn't invest. I invest other places. But I'm just, sometimes I get so disappointed right. in how we behave when it comes to business as black people. I want us to be, I want us, I want to see us be more excellent. And if we just, if we're just not there yet, that's okay. Just let people know, no, hey, I'm not there yet. But like you said, JT, and I agree with you 100%. Look, uh, if I ain't stunting by 25, you know, it's like, you, you know, if I'm not stunting by 25, then I ain't doing nothing. Because I think for us, JT, and, and, and some people may disagree with me, but it's it, it's it's like we're living on borrowed time. So I got to hurry up and do this. Kind of like what Tupac was doing when he was recording all that music. They say he was doing that because he felt like he was on borrowed time. And now we know he was. So that's all I got to say, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your content, man, and looking forward for, to some more good stuff. Hey, thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate it. I, I do want to touch on, on, on some point. I think you made a lot of great points, but I do want to touch on one particular particular thing that you said about, you know, obviously it's like the black community, we don't have the right, you know, a uh, uh, level of business education. Now, I, I, I want to be clear. I, I'm from a particular position. Being a financial advisor, I have clients that look different. I have black clients, I have white clients, I have Asian clients, I have a bunch of different types of clients. And I can tell you, financial literacy is across the board, right? It doesn't matter what color you are for the most part. Financial literacy is about the same. The issue is in the black community is that we have institutional things that happened in the past that have us behind, right? You take the average white person, the average Asian person, average Indian, average black person, they're not going to be good at business. Business is not a natural skill. Business, like you might be naturally good at selling, like it looks like Chef uh, P. She looks like she's naturally good at selling and marketing. That is a skill that some people can have naturally. But most people aren't naturally good at accounting. They're not naturally good at supply chain management. Like these are, are, are things that you have to learn. And you either learn them the, yourself or you hire the people on your staff to bring them in. And, you know, it, it, it's across the board. The problem is, you know, white community has generations of uh, time to build up a segment of their community that are strong and have the right funding for businesses. While, you know, we're basically starting from just a few, you know, a few generations, a couple of decades, really, when you add it up at the opportunities to get funding, we're still not funded at the same rate as other communities are funded. So it's, it's, we're, we're at a disadvantage, but then we compound the disadvantage by lowering our standards and also by claiming that any type of criticism is hating. That's not it. You have to be willing to take any criticism if you present something to the public. That's just the way, just the way it is. That's how it goes. All right, let me see here. We got we got Ronnie in the building. Let me bring up Ronnie. You're live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going hey. on? 
JT, how are you doing? I'm back again, man. The gentleman that gave the FBI address, I'm <laughs> Jay Morrison, man. How you doing? I remember, man. What's going on? Yeah, man. Um, I feel, you know, I, based on this story for this pink sauce, you know, the lady tried. Um, the only issue I see, especially that goes in our community, is we don't seek mentorship, right? If she would have sought out somebody that's actually in that industry that has years of experience, they would actually pull her under their wing and help her out through the process. Um, the worst thing I can tell you that has happened to our culture is social media. Because for some reason, our culture thinks entrepreneurship happens overnight. Yep. I don't know where we've gotten this thing that, like you said, if you're not successful by 25, you're, you're just not it. The average person doesn't hit their ceiling until the late 40s, 50s, even their 60s, if you really look at entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, they people need to tell you that word means are you willing to struggle for a long period of time? That's what it is. It's not an overnight thing. Um, but like I said, she tried. If she would have just got proper mentorship, I think it would. she would have probably had a better outcome. Um, the sauce does look nasty. I'm not even going to lie. I, just, just looking at the video, she probably should have picked a different color. Pink doesn't go with food, but um, that's pretty much what I have. Like I said, the young lady tried, you know, for people that are trying to go into business, try to get that mentorship that can, that can help you avoid all the pitfalls and, you know, stumbling blocks and stuff like that. And um, last thing I want to add, uh, the viewers, we're waiting on that uh, town hall video from you. I don't know what you're but waiting. Y'all hey, been hitting me up on that. I, I, the reason why I haven't done it is because I thought y'all were tired. Of no, 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 no. Like, 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 I'm gonna be honest. It's like I, I was looking at the town hall. So, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Jay Morrison, Tulsa Real Estate Fund. I've covered the story in several videos, and they recently did a town hall where investors and some people who weren't investors, they, you know, were asking questions of Jay Morrison of the recent allegations that have come up of, uh, you know, mishandling of funds with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, and honestly, he didn't give any answers that I didn't already expect for him to say. So it wasn't that, it wasn't that important to me, but hey, listen, if y'all want me to do it, I, I'm happy to do it. Ain't no big thing to me. I just thought y'all were tired of the story. That's all. I need, I need you to do it. I got pushback on the last caller that said that the people mm -hmm. that went up there, they were not investors while they're speaking. Mm -hmm. If you notice the people in the crowd, you can tell who he targeted. When you start seeing Nike, Charles Barkley sneakers, baseball jerseys, those are not sophisticated investors. Um, the gentleman, Nathan Daly, I believe his name, he's an officer, a, pre, mm -hmm. uh, a fellow officer. Mm -hmm. He actually is not an investor, but he was actually the only person that went up there and asked decent questions. All the other investors, they did not know what to ask. The older gentleman that had all the white hair, when he went up there speaking, I felt so sorry. And I'm just like, he did not get, he did not understand or he did not understand what type of questions to ask Dave Morrison. So that's why that, that's a little pushback that I have for the previous caller saying, why are you asking questions if you didn't invest? We need mm -hmm. people like that that actually know the right questions to ask someone like him that's stealing money from the community. But that's all I have. All right. All right, my brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, y'all yeah, want me to do it? I'll do it. Listen, it's easy work for me, but I just thought, thought y'all were tired of it. But check your schedules. I'll be doing a, a video on that sometime soon. Uh, let me go to the next caller. We have Tanya. Tanya, you are live on the air with Pocket Watching with JT. What's going good on? E good evening, JT, and I really appreciate you taking my call. And again, mm -hmm. I thank you for everything you're doing for the community. You are definitely making an impact <laughs> and everyone else you work with. I just want to say, um, you know, it's our attitude, JT. You mm -hmm. know, what happened to being humble? The attitudes are off the charts. And I've worked everywhere from in the school system to elderly adults. And I'm telling you, when you come off with such a nasty attitude, it makes people mm -hmm. not want to do anything for you. And if they could block anything for you, they would definitely do that. So, you know, I don't know a lot about the story, but I did see the young lady's response when people had legitimate concerns. And mm -hmm. oh, my God, her attitude was horrible. It was just yeah. horrible. I can't say that enough. The other thing I want to say is the same thing I said the last time. I went to see um, Boyce Watkins mm -hmm. back in 2015, and he talked about Tulsa, Oklahoma, 
And now since the catastrophe happened, I'm sorry, JT, but I, I, I got to make that connection somewhere. I don't know how long those two been friends, like I said before, but something is not uh -huh. right. <laughs> you know, Dr. Uh, Boyce Watkins, you know, all respect, but his hands, I got a strong feeling his hands is not clean in this whole mess. And for the other mm -hmm. caller who said, if you didn't invest, why are you there? Well, guess what? I care. And if I was in the Atlanta, wherever they were, I would have stood up because what affects one eventually affects all in some kind of way. We don't know if somebody was suffering from depression, if they tried to take their life. We don't know what kind of devastating effects that had on other people. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, it, it makes sense to me. It's like, listen, he, he personally, I believe he personally invited me to come down. Listen. <laughs> That ain't gonna happen. Listen, I, let, let me let me say something to Jay real quick. Jay, listen, me and you were not the same. Like mm -hmm. I, I actually have real businesses that I have to operate here where I'm from. I, I can't just fly down to Atlanta to see you basically give the answers that I knew you were gonna give anyway. If you would have called on me, mm -hmm. anyway, I could have been raising my hands and tap dancing. I, I mm -hmm. doubt you probably would have called on me because there's several things that I would have asked you that probably the the other people there didn't ask, but it's just, I, I can't do that, Jay, because I'm actually trying to run profitable businesses and not just be a marketer and, you know, dance online. I got stuff that I got to actually do. But uh, Tanya, thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate it every time you call in, okay? Thank you, JT. Have a good night. All right, you too. She made a great point about attitude. I mean, I actually had that in my notes earlier the attitude, the attitude that Chef P has reflects her generation, right? That attitude of almost everything I do is right. Any criticism is just hate and whatever. Like when, when she told that one white TikTok lady that she's not special. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what more can you say? She told one of her customers who was concerned about the product that they bought. She said, you're not special. <laughs> like, well, well, now your haters have fuel, Miss, Miss P, Chef P. With you and your, uh, your GoFundMe, they can say, you're not special. You got $120,000 in a short period of time. $120,000. That is more than probably three, maybe three and a half times the average annual income of many of your followers. So now that you're crying and basically e-begging with the GoFundMe, they can say you're not special. See, see how karma works? See, she wasn't special. Now you're not special and you can continue to e-beg. Uh, let me bring up, we got Brooklyn King in the building. What's going on, Brooklyn King? Hey, what's going on, JT? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. So, uh, definitely love your show. First time caller. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to all your videos. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm down with the, with the corny crew. So, a couple <laughs> of things. Let's, let's work backwards. A book that I think people should listen to or, or read is by Steve Stout called The Tanning of America. I believe the book is. Talks about how culture, use that quotation. Mm -hmm. um makes things pop make things go so referring to the person who said about diddy not owning the product and how he's crying now how he wanted the company to promote it like they're promoting george clooney but mm -hmm. you're not tapping into all of america white america you're tapping into the culture to make it pop and then once you reach the ceiling you're trying to grasp everything else it doesn't work that way because that's how all of the people in the culture work get the black mm -hmm. folks to buy once it reaches the plateau you, you stop and you try to get white America. It doesn't work that way. That's why everything goes to the side. Now, pertaining to this young lady, a couple of things. She made $100,000. Most entrepreneurs that make money in, in any business, whether it's legal or illegal, they have debt. They have bills. They have overhead. So once they get the $100,000 after taxes, she has to pay whatever debt she has. Mm -hmm. her, her mortgage, her cell phone, her car note, maybe pay off her mama house pay back people she borrowed money from to start the business. So when people say, oh, she made $100,000, you're good at taxes. Does she get $50,000? And then after 50, it's a lot. What does she have to pay back? And then moving forward, is she good at managing money? It could be a, a person who has a million dollars and then they lose that within a year if they don't have good money management skills. 
And right. the last thing I want to sort of touch on when people say, well, they could have, she could have gotten a mentor. It's not that easy all the time, you know, to get a mentor. My, my sister-in-law owns a, a, a bath and body company she started 15 plus years ago. The only mm-hmm. mentor at the time that was doing it big was Carol's daughter, right? So right, she couldn't go to Carol's daughter and, and help me. Now she's big. She's in Baltimore. She has a multi-million dollar company. It's doing great. Now she mentors other people and people will, will tell you that she, that she's the reason why they started their company. But I, I, when I looked at the guy coming to save her, first thing I thought about was Shark Tank. People think <laughs> Shark Tank is great. You partner with people. But I'm saying, ah. He probably did a, a Mr. Wonderful deal, saw an opportunity, <laughs> took advantage and said, OK, I'm going to give you one hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to make you a millionaire over so many years. But then she's like right. looking probably at the million dollars, but not thinking, oh, it's one hundred thousand dollars chopped up to make a million dollars. She probably saw the, the M's I'm like, yeah, that's a million chopped up over one year or whatever, whatever the amount of money she was getting. They didn't even look at it. She was just looking at, you know, I guess the the, the short term as opposed to long term. And hopefully, you know. She reach out to you or someone else and sort of restructure her deal or maybe, you know, invest the money properly, you know, or, or maybe go to EYL and, and try to figure out how to, you know, hide the money, get a tax ID, put it into an LLC, transfer it over here. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's about it. But I appreciate you, bro. Keep doing your thing. What I would love to see is you and Tone Talks do a, a, another sort of uh, collab. I mean, I think you guys, you, Tone Talks. Um, Let, uh, I'm Eli, down for it. I'm absolutely down for it. And, and Tone, if you're watching this, I'm going to text you later. We got to set something up. Yeah, you and Eli and, and Tone, like, like you guys are like the like the Avengers, like to come to, to save us. And, and what people, let me just say this last thing. What people don't seem to understand, they say, well, why are you hating on black people? It's not that. White folks got their people doing this stuff for the white folks. I know people personally that invested with Jay personally, and they spent mm-hmm. their last. I'm talking about their last 10 grand. Their last 500, their last. And Tone will tell you, we don't have it like that. 10 grand. And, and, and my homegirl out here in New York from Queens, you know, was, was with, when he was out in Brooklyn doing his, his town hall, whatever, she was there, kept it civil. But hmm. when, when people spend their last 10 grand or five grand, you got to stop playing with people's money. Like it, it wouldn't have been nice, but right. she kept it civil, you know, and she put in her request. Mm-hmm. She got blocked, all these different things. So people have to be careful out here playing with people's money, their livelihood. Yes, we might need to do our own due diligence, but you're, you're, you're literally picking from the low-hanging fruit of the community. So anyway, bro, I appreciate you, man. Good luck with everything. And, and nah, I man. look Thank forward to your videos. Thank you. I appreciate it. Real quick, I, I, I was reminded of something while you were talking, though, about the mentorship. Usually, yes, trying to find a mentor uh, that is close, Finding a mentor that's you know walked in your shoes uh, is kind of hard, but for this particular lady, Chef P, she actually had a mentor reach out to her. If y'all go to uh, TikTok, I guess there is a a younger African American woman who has been running her family's uh, sauce business or you know retail food business for some time. She teaches on her TikTok all the different tricks of the trades and the things to look out for. She reached out to the pink sauce lady and she basically told the pink sauce lady, based on what I remember of the story, that she kind of told her, hey, you know, these are the things you need to look out for. You know, you can you talk to me. And I think the DMs kind of either got ignored or yeah, she, she responded, but she wasn't receptive. So she had an opportunity to be mentored by someone who is a veteran in the industry and she is a black woman and for whatever reason she didn't she didn't take to it so you know that goes back on her all right we got three more callers and we're gonna wrap this up we got uh pro woman j pro woman j you are live on air what's going on hello hello can you hear me pocket watcher loud and clear what's going on Okay, hey, a few quick points. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I, and one of them will be a point of constructive criticism. You ready for it? Give it to oh. me. Okay, um, let me say something real quick on the mentorship thing, because mm-hmm. Jay Morrison tried to pull that card in the town hall meeting whenever he was asked to be accountable about why he managed the fund so poorly. It I was, remember. yep, I didn't know. 
Nobody's ever done this before, so I didn't know. And the haters made it hard for me to get the kind of support I needed. Now, here's how that's BS. Mm -hmm. um, there are many people in the black community who would have been more than happy to come in and help him show that he was not being a fraud. And he's right there in Atlanta with the, the heart of, of black professionalism and black excellence for uh, HBCUs with business departments yeah. right there in Atlanta. The Small Business Administration, I'm sure even the SBA would have been able to maybe step in and he could have gotten some mentorship there. So that that whole thing about the haters made it hard for him to get the kind of support. Mm -hmm. That is that that's not true. Um, the, uh, real quick though, that's a good point. I just want to touch on something because you made me remember. to his credit, though, to Jay's credit. He did say that he was looking for. Uh, you know, investors and, and, and advisors early on. Then he got the money. He said after he got the money, his ego kind of got built up and he said, hey, I couldn't find people before. Now that I got this money, he really didn't need them. Like in his mind, it's like to get it, I'm going to do it myself because I was able to raise the money by myself. So I will give him credit for that. He did admit that his ego kept him from being able to really look for uh, the proper staff and the people with the credentials and stuff like that, because he just said, F it, I'm going to do it by myself. So I, I, I give him credit for that. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Now, that, that's a commendable point uh, yeah. since he said that. And that's all the more reason why you have a board in place before right. you do something like that. Take on that yeah. kind of an undertaking. Um, yes. One 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 thing about a criticism and then I'm going to give you some uh, some suggestions. Sure. Um I would say for you and um, maybe Tone and Yvette, um, maybe there's a little bit too much talking about uh, what things are not and not providing enough examples of what things are actually correct and actually working and the things that we can do in this age of the wealth gap. I know Yvette and Tone, they feel one of the issues that I have with them is they feel that if you do anything, it's not good enough because it's not going to close the wealth gap. And then they make these directives like Tone was on a video the other day telling black people, you need to have a million dollars in insurance. Does Tone have a million dollars in insurance, number one? And then number two, he didn't really give any information about what it really would actually take for most black people to get a million dollars in insurance is not that easy. But in this age of the wealth gap, I think there are some survival tactics that black people need to begin to engage in. And I would like to see influencers with big platforms such as yourself start to talk about it a little bit more. And I can get into that a, a, another time now. Okay. If you, now we, we, we've beaten Jay Horse, uh, I mean, uh, Jay Morris to death and all the, the, all of them, but there are legitimate small businesses, black small businesses that are out here doing it right. And mm -hmm. I would love for you to highlight them. For example, Julian's uh, Techie Homes was a, a, it, it's, a it's a community of uh, small homes in Georgia uh -huh. that was crowdfunded. Legit. The homes are there. Legitimate. Um, maybe do a show on that. There is the Black Bread Company and a Curl Mix Company, both Chicago based. Com I'm in Chicago, by the way, both Chicago based companies. None right. of them have had any trouble with shootings or anything like that. Okay. Legit black businesses. Curl Mix even went on Shark Tank and denied the deal because she didn't want to give up the equity legitimate right. small black businesses doing it right. And I would like to see them highlight it because I think we're spending a little bit too, too, too much time on what's mm. wrong and not talking about what's right and what we actually have to do different. But now I know people want to hear the uh, salacious stuff. See, that's salacious and titillating. And I think right. maybe, and this is my last point, I think, because maybe I think you guys are creating a little bit of a monster that you guys got to keep feeding. Like you say, when you try to come with legitimate financial topics, nobody wants to watch. But let me end with this point. Elijah uh -huh. Muhammad said, if you put the, the clean glass of water next to the dirty glass of water, the people will take the clean glass of water every time. So that's my comment. Thank you.
it, it, you are appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, I do want to touch on a couple of the, the other points. Um, as far as the, uh, the the content, so highlighting, uh, you know, good black businesses and, you know, showing examples of success probably won't be a part of my show because my show is more either, you know, the call in financial tips and it's the, you know, reacting to scammer and weird stuff within black culture. It's like American Greed. I was a big fan and still am a big fan of American Greed. I started watching American Greed when I was in college. American Greed never does an episode of, hey, look at this business that wasn't a fraud. <laughs> or, hey, look at this uh, person who did not embezzle money. Every episode is someone who's committing fraud or they're embezzling money because that's the niche that they do. It's kind of like, like CoffeeZilla. Right. If you go over and you watch uh, CoffeeZilla, I don't see too many episodes of CoffeeZilla showing you the great businessman or businesswoman or crypto company that did not defraud people. That's kind of like the niche. But what I will do, and I think I've done in the past and I try to continue to do, if people send me stories, positive stories of things that go on, you know, you know businesses that went the right way or they're a great example I will share those videos, uh, you know, on my community tab for the content creators who do do interviews. Like I don't do, I'm not an interview podcast. Like I'm not interviewing celebrities. I'm not interviewing small business owners. And I'm like, you know, why are you such a good business owner? Like, I don't do that. That's not my personality. And that's not what my content's going to be. But if I do see someone who's doing good and I want them to be highlighted, I will absolutely share them on my community tab and promote it that way. But, you know, I have a little niche here and I, I try not to chase stories. Like that's the reason why I didn't do the Jay Morrison town hall story, but people are asking for it. So I'm going to do it, but uh, I'm, I'm going to stay within my niche because if I try to get too far out and I'm looking for all these positive stories and I'm, I'm not a daytime talk show, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But I like that content. I'll watch it, but I don't make that content. But for all of you uh, content creators or would-be content creators who want to make that type of content, make it, send it to me. If I like it, I'll share it. All right, so we got a couple more callers, and we're going to wrap this up. We got Lay Loves in the building. Lay Loves, you're live on the air. What's going on? Hey, JT. How you doing tonight? I'm I'm doing good. How you doing? I, I'm good. I, I apologize because I, I, I came in late. I was, you know, at one of my W-2 jobs that nobody respects, so I wasn't able to <laughs> catch the oh, whole show. You, you got one of those things that actually pay you. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, 80% it's, of the, the so-called business owners, they broke. <laughs> You, right. you got something that actually pays you. You got a W-2 job. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I do what I can. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was calling about Chef, Chef P or Pie, however she says, says it. And so I mm -hmm. apologize if, I, if I'm if i touching on something that was already covered by you or no, one of right the other it. callers. But what troubles me about her is, one... What did you blow the hundred and twenty thousand dollars on in a few months? Like I don't get it. And then my other thing is, she knew going into the deal that she was either giving up her intellectual property or equity in her quote unquote business, which we we know at this point there really is none. It was just right. her intellectual property that, that she sold to them. And now you've torn your draws with these people by outing, outing them. So they're not probably not going to want to work with you in the future. But had she been able to hold her, her ego for just a minute, right. being that she knows she doesn't understand the business, she should have left an avenue open with this company for future intellectual property. You had to know that that one sauce wasn't going to be enough for her to ride off into the sunset for the rest of her life. I, so, I don't I don't think she knew that. I, I, think, <laughs> really? I think you're giving her too much grace. I think there's two things that you're giving her too much grace on. Uh, number one, knowing that that one sauce wasn't going to be the... I, I fully believe 
that she thought that this one sauce was going to be the thing that would make her a multimillionaire. I, I believe yeah. that. I think she thought that. And number two, I don't think she understood that contract. You think that she understood it. I don't believe she understood the contract. That's why she's so upset. Maybe now she's getting a better understanding of what she signed. Even the company said they were willing to reimburse her for to hire an attorney to better explain to her about what, what you know, how the contract was. But I don't think she understood the contract. And I don't think she understood that this one food product was not going to be the thing that makes her generationally wealthy. She was going to become a multimillionaire and never have to work again. I think she thought that she had something. That's insane to me because yeah. like, even just from my point of view, I do think or would have thought that she's probably getting screwed in some way by that company, just by, just, just on, just based on the fact that she's a little ignorant. Right. But then for them to turn around and be willing to pay for a lawyer <laughs> to go over things, it's mm. just like not many people would get that that chance, that, right. that second, third chance to, to go back to the well. And, you know, like I said, why wouldn't you just leave the door open in some way to be able to continue to work with these people. And even if you did think the pink sauce was going to be the one, why would you rest on your laurels with that? Don't you have something? If you were able to come up with that, why wouldn't you continue to want to work with them or maybe invest the money that you got from them to be able to create, to be able to go better prepared into another deal with another company. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, just, I think that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that she's not realizing. This outburst and this, uh, you know, rant that she did, like the rant that she did was like almost an hour long. Like she was, she was taking bottles of the pink sauce and throwing it on the ground and, you know, watching it, you know, explode. And, you know, she was really like showing and she was, she was beating down the brand. She was basically saying the stuff that I see at Walmart, that's not my vision. You know, it, it looks more tan. It's not pink. And, you know, it doesn't taste the way it should taste. I believe she said this almost word for word. She said this. If I was still in control, everything would be perfect. If I was still, <laughs> if I was still running everything, there wouldn't be a problem. Like, like you literally had an opportunity to run everything. And that's when people were claiming that they, they were getting sick. That's when you were sending out bottles with glitter in it, allegedly. Right. Oh, so God. that showed you how delusional I think she is in, uh, you know, understanding what her capabilities are in the relationship with the uh, company. And she doesn't realize that even if you think this is a bad relationship, She's going about it in the wrong way because now what other company will want to partner with you if they believe any minor misunderstanding, any uh, conflict, which in every relationship, there's a conflict. I've never heard of any relationship, be it a family relationship or a business relationship. Every relationship, there will be a conflict. If a potential business partner is thinking to themselves, well, it is viral. We might be able to make some money with this. But at any time there's conflict, she can go rogue, go online, and she can beat down the brand, and she can make us look bad, maybe even accuse us of racism, right? They don't want any of that. And they'll rather miss out on the opportunity to make money with the pink sauce brand than to risk having to deal with someone who would flip out the way that she flipped out. So she, I mean, she's shooting herself in the foot. Yeah, her name is pretty much mud now out in these streets. So, yeah. but uh, thanks so much for talking to us about that. And I ain't even going to touch Jay Morrison. That, that was just like an infomercial for people who don't understand anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I told people, and thank you so much. I told people, listen, Jay Morrison is on the Mount Rushmore of talking Negroes on the internet. Like, I will always credit him for that. If you give that man a microphone, a marker, and a whiteboard, he will dazzle you, 
right? He will he will make it entertaining. If you do not know or have any type of fundamental understanding of the topic that he's speaking on, he's going to amaze you. But if you do understand the topic that he's speaking on, you'll understand that he's just saying gibberish. But he is a good showman. Once again, a lot of people who claim that they're really good businessmen and businesswomen, at least online, most likely you're just good marketers. You're good at promoting. You probably aren't good businessmen and businesswomen because like Jay, when given the opportunity to perform, he can't perform. Miss P, a chef P, when given the opportunity to perform in business, she couldn't perform, but she can promote. So you just understand what your skills are, stay kind of in that lane and hire out the things that you can't do. All right, no more new callers. I got DJ and Make a Change. Let me bring up Make a Change because it's been a while since I heard from the brother Make a Change. So Make a Change, you're live on air. What's going on? Hey, how you doing, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, man. It's been a while since I heard your voice, man. It's What's going on? Wild, man. Hey, I, I think with the whole Chef P situation, I think mm -hmm. we see in, you know, the good and the bad of social media. You know, it's social media has, you know, you could come online with a product and go viral and be successful. But on the other hand, you know, if you don't really understand business, you could get into, into deep waters really quick, you know. And I sure with with you being, and I think this is something that you could probably speak to as now as you look at your channel and you're growing, the amount of people are probably hitting you up on your DMs to do business and to do different things. You know? Yeah. If you really don't, you know, if you are don't understand, you could get caught up really quick into one of these type of businesses where people are offering you stuff or hey, I got a deal for you. I see you promoting this product. I could help you. And if you don't cross your I's and dot your T's, you know, you end up on, on the wrong end, you know? That, and that, that, that's a great point. That's a great point. Cause I, I always have to say this. I understand that my personal position is not the average person's position. I understand that I come from a place of privilege, you know, even you know, within the culture, I come from a place of privilege the people who come in my DMs and the people in the companies that come to my uh, email offering me a bag to promote something. If I wasn't a person who lives a comfortable life, I'm not I'm not mega rich. I don't fly on private jets. I don't wear <laughs> Rolexes. I don't drive a Lambo, but I'm comfortable. If I wasn't comfortable. Oh, boy, listen. I would be selling all of these crypto coins. They come. Do you know how much money they offer me? For five seconds of my time, just just five seconds to pitch you guys some cryptocurrency exchange or whatever. Thousands, like ten thousand dollars to sell you guys to say, hey, y'all want to buy crypto? Uh, use crypto exchange X Y Z. Do 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 do. They are willing to give me ten thousand dollars for that. It's ridiculous. Now I'm not a big fan of crypto. Most of you out here most likely don't have the discretionary money to invest in a speculative, unregulated asset class like cryptocurrency. So I would never promote it anyway. And most of these uh, companies are shady. Their, their email address comes from somewhere in yep. Eastern Europe or something crazy like that. So I don't do it. But I can understand a person who is really trying to hustle on YouTube who, you know, doesn't make the money that I make outside of YouTube, I can see them saying, yeah, I'll take that $10,000 bag for a 30 second commercial on my live stream. Like I can see that. And they won't care who the company is and what they do. They're just taking a bag. And if someone loses their life savings, I say, I told you to do your own research. Right. I told you this wasn't financial advice. Do your own research. I was just, you know, documenting. I was documenting my process or whatever, whatever they'll say. Right. Yeah. It comes from a position of they're in need of the money. And I get it. I understand that. Um, I'm just lucky. I, I'm lucky. Yep. Hey, you got any new videos coming out, man? What's going on with your channel? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on some stuff. I'm trying to come back. I Actually, I have a question yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll probably I'll send you an email. I'll send you an email. So look out for that email. Yeah, don't put and, me on the spot. 
Don't put no. me in, spite, oh, in front of everybody. Shoot me. No, no. I sent you an email. So, and that's one other thing in regard to this whole ping source stuff. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and it's 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 very easy to fall for some. If I, I don't know if you saw that video that um um Coffeezilla put out this week, and in regards to all those YouTubers that mm-hmm. signed up for like a podcast. And one of the things which is interesting, I haven't is, seen it all. I, okay. I, I watched like the first like five minutes of it. I got I got to catch the rest of it. Okay, so one of the things was interesting. He was asking them, "How did you guys fall for this?" And one of the things they said mm-hmm. they were like, "Well, a friend said he was making a lot of money. They didn't look into the company. They didn't do any research." And I think just with this pink mm-hmm. sauce lady, you know, is mm-hmm. I don't know the whole story behind the company. They're saying one thing, she's saying one thing, but I. It goes back to when you not business savvy and you come out and you get a cup, you get some success. It's very easy to get into deep waters, and I think that's what happened with her. Is she, mm-hmm. you know, got in. You know, she got the success from the social media, and then once she that wanted, blew yeah, up, she, she wasn't the monetary. Yeah, she wasn't doing the basis to really build the business the correct way. So people, people don't get that, right? People don't understand. Like you can go viral. You can have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and still be broke. Yeah, right? you can. Yeah. Going viral does not equate to a bag most of the time. I know people and influencers who have over a million either subscribers or followers or whatever when you add it all up, but they're still living a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. They're, they're, they're virtually broke because they haven't figured out how to monetize that. And I can understand right. how... She can look and say, I got billions of views. Everybody know my product name and all of this. But she didn't have the bag in that right. rush to get the bag because they want to match all of the hype and the influence right. with a bag. And their rush right. to get there, they, they miss out on all of the th- steps that takes that you have to take in order to not get scammed or not get finessed or just get beat out on a business deal. I mean, that happens. When you're negotiating yep. a business deal, you're trying to get as much as possible in that situation. It's like when you're trying to negotiate a raise with your boss. Your boss does not want to pay you everything that he has in the budget to pay you. They're trying to negotiate. And if you allow them to beat you in a negotiation, you're not being scammed. It's just that right. you know you, you didn't abdicate hard enough for your position. Yep. So, yep. yep. So, hey, I'm going to drop about one thing I was going to say um, before mm. I leave. I think you should do a, a show, man, on kind of to help. some. Like I said, since you having the success, because I don't have a big channel or anything, but I know as a new YouTuber coming mm. into the game, like you say, you people are so anxious to make the money that they don't know how to weed out good opportunities versus bad mm. opportunities. And you know, you're getting, you get a lot of opportunities of people coming to try to sell you stuff. Oh, hey, I could help you market your channel. I could help you do this. And then right. you get in deep. So I think it might be a good show to help out because since you're having that success now, you, you, you're you seeing the other side of it's, it. It's, I know you're seeing it. <laughs> bro, it, here's the weird thing. Here's the weird thing. I still don't think of myself as a big channel. Now I know at this point when when I'm over ninety two thousand, uh-huh. I'm, I'm you know clearly it's the, it's a but, level. But you, but you have a lot of reach now. You have a lot of reach. Yeah. <laughs> in, my, in my in my mind, right? In my mind, I don't think I just do this for fun, so I don't think of it. But no, that's that's a good idea. Yeah. I, I, uh, I want to say though, I'm blessed with certain YouTube mentors that most people probably don't have. Yeah. Right. Orlando Minor. For those mm-hmm. of you who don't know, Orlando Minor is a genius when it comes to YouTube. A genius when it comes to YouTube. This is someone who I know personally. He has helped me and mentored me in my, my growth on YouTube. Then there's O'Shea Duke Jackson, the lead attorney. These are people who reached out to me and, and really gave me a lot of uh, you know fundamental things of how I need to do and work with my channel. So to me, it's like, I'm 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 spoiled. I'm like I'm a spoiled brat when it comes to YouTube. I'm gonna be honest. I'm a spoiled brat. My channel grew much faster than the average channel does. I don't even take it as serious as some other YouTubers who have a smaller channel. Uh, I was able to speak on topics in a community where no one else would kind of speaking on these topics in this way from my perspective, and it caught on fire. So I'm spoiled. 
But yeah, that, that's a good good topic. I, I'm gonna probably try to uh, do something, but I can't do it by myself. I gotta bring up some other YouTubers who really know what they're talking about. But that would be a good a good show. All right, here we go. We got our last caller of the night. We got DJ. DJ, you're live on the air. What's going on? Oh, DJ, going once, going twice. Sounds like you're trying, DJ, but I got to go to bed. Going once, twice, maybe next time, maybe next time, DJ. All right, so listen, people, hey, I appreciate all the support. We are fighting and clawing and trying to get our way to uh, 100. Oh, hold on, hold on. All right, DJ, you dropped out. You came back in. I can see you now. All right, let me give you one more shot. DJ, what's going on? All right, so um, I actually spoke to the young lady that the video is about. Okay. Um, I, did, I, I didn't get an opportunity to listen to your whole take on mm -hmm. everything, so I would have to listen to your take before I um, before I hear, hear, you know, your approach to everything. I, I'll well, just tell I, you... I'm... I can give you a summary. Hold on. I'm going to give you okay, a summary real quick on my position. My position was that she went viral. Um, her brand grew faster than her capability to actually scale the business. I believe that she was a good marketer, but she's not a businesswoman. So there's things that she did not understand. And I also believe that her, her attitude was an issue when her customers who gave her real criticism of the product that they received, she took that criticism as hating instead of being constructive and she wasn't able to pivot in the right way. Then even after that, when she had the opportunity to partner with a bigger company who has the, you know, all the industry knowledge and whatnot, I think she was so fast to uh, capitalize on the opportunity to stunt on her haters to say, hey, I've got my product in Walmart that she didn't fully understand the deal that she got herself into. That's why I think now she's upset with the contract because she rushed into it. In a summary, that's my view. Okay, so that's that was my view before speaking with her. Obviously, okay. You never know who's telling the truth until it goes to court and you really see documents, whatever, whatever. But mm -hmm. so from my understanding, everything you said was true up until um, it got to the business. So okay. the young lady basically said, um, and I spoke with her, she said, I could post this on my brand and I could talk about it. That's why I'm coming on here and I'm not defending because I don't right. know who's telling the truth. I haven't talked to the other side and I probably will never get to. So I guess you can call it a bias information. But okay. pretty much, this is something that could potentially happen to everybody. And I think this is a good case study and I'm glad you're doing this. Mm -hmm. um, basically what she said is, they never signed a legal binding contract to actually sell her sauce. What they okay. did is gave her a letter of intent, like, hey, let's actually let's sit down and talk about what we're going to do we're going to give you a royalty we're going to give you um xyz and marketing dollars we're gonna um you know we're gonna do the right thing quote unquote and what right. i think happened is her attitude she talked like and, and i don't care if she watched this or not but she talks like she has an mba from harvard and she don't like she, she her ego is, I know it, I know it, I know it. And the reality yeah. is, you don't know what you don't know. I right. call, I think I'm pretty good at business, but I still understand mm -hmm. I ain't got nothing on 12 MBAs from Harvard who've been doing business in the industry for 50 years. Right. I, I, I still have to protect myself. But what I think is her ego got in the way, and mm -hmm. basically, they just stole her business. They just basically said, all right, we're never going to sign a legal binding contract. You know why? Because the leak in order, and you know this, you're a financial advisor. Right. In order to sue somebody, it costs thousands and thousands of dollars. It costs real money. They know she ain't got no okay. real money. 
So basically, they're daring her to sue her, to sue them for the money. They just using her name, using her idea, using the sauce. They got the letter of intent, which she signed or didn't sign. I don't know, but a letter of intent is not a binding contract. It right. says, hey, we're, we're going to, we're like, hey, Pocket Watch, I want to buy your YouTube channel. Here's a letter of intent for you and your lawyers to show up and do this meeting. You sign a letter of intent and I just, you know, hack your YouTube channel and start putting my videos up. And you don't have the money to go hire a lawyer to get your stuff back. You're poor. You grew up in the hood. And you you got this mentality that you're 10 times smarter than the MBAs from Harvard. So you're never even going to think about going to get a lawyer and all of this before it's too late. Uh -huh. So that's that was my take. That's my understanding of the situation. Um, based on the conversation biased, that you had with her. Based on the conversation. Um, it's some, you know what, because I've, I, I've been in situations where companies, large billion dollar companies tried to take advantage of myself, but mm -hmm. luckily in business, I had money saved up. I did the flexing. I bought a rolly. I did all of this crazy stuff. And soon as that lawsuit came up, I sold it because I'm like, hold on. I got to the lawyers I was talking to, they was talking about. 30,000 just to even file a lawsuit, 20,000 yeah. to file a lawsuit. I'm like, okay, I got that money, but I still need to eat. I still need to run my business. I still need to do this. So I sold everything that I need to do. And now I'm at a place where um, it's going to work out in my favor. She's not that lucky. So that's what it sounds like based okay. on the conversation is they basically realize that Oh, she she thinks she's smarter than she is. She didn't have a trademark. She don't tra she didn't trademark her name or the pink sauce. She tried to, but got caught up with a bad lawyer. But she still has an opportunity to go to go and get this right. But it's gonna cost her probably about a hundred thousand dollars, which I don't think she has. So <sighs> she well, well, go before, funny. Hold before on. I get my reaction, Hold what on. is she your platform? Because you you. You haven't made the content yet on this, right? No, 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 no. I where where can we find it when you make it? So I'm just gonna do a post on Instagram. I own Black Millionaires. Okay, so, I own, so I own a brand. Sorry, what's your Instagram page? It's called Black Millionaires. Black Millionaires. Okay, Black Millionaires. I might be already following you. It sounds familiar. Um, okay, so here, here's so, here's my follow up, and I know you don't have the answers. Cause this is this is you know a story from her. But here's my follow up, just basic business to me. All right, here's the issue. Number one, if it was just a letter of intent, why did they pay her one hundred and twenty thousand dollars over the course of a few months? The business they would not have paid her any money, right? So that that seems odd. Before they pay you money they would have some paperwork signed before they pay you money. So that seems odd. Once again, I know you don't have the answers because you know you got the story from her. Number two, the question that I would have asked her was like, okay, so you're telling me that Walmart, and I have clients who were able to get products in Walmart. It's not the easiest process in the world to get a product in the Walmart. So you're telling me Walmart is going to go into business who's already in business with this brand, but they're going to just say, okay, we we know that paperwork was signed. We're not going to make sure that everything's fine. We're just going to say, okay, everything's fine. Because remember, she's sitting up on a panel of other black females who have a product in Walmart. And I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I didn't like, see that. I didn't see that. At any time did she mention to say, and you know what? I really haven't signed anything for my product to be here yet, but I'm just happy to be here. Well, okay, hold on. Let me, let me, all right, let me, let me. For one, she never told me they paid her 120000 And if she did, I didn't hear that part because that would have raised my red flags. Yeah, they got, Two, they got. So the company sent another publication the actual bank statements and the receipts of paying her and they paid her company. I forget the name of a company, uh, but they said it in the, the article. It's like 
magic flavors or something, something like that. I know I'm saying it wrong, but she has a company and it's a corporation because it was INC at the end of it. So they have proof of the one hundred and twenty thousand dollar payment. It was more than one payment, but it totaled one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. OK, I, I OK, I wasn't aware of that I would definitely recircle back around to, to, yeah. to, to fact check that because I mm -hmm. didn't hear that. And two, the second thing you said, it, it is very to it, it's, to it's totally possible for Walmart or Target or one of these companies to do business with somebody who don't have their paperwork right for the and just assume fact that is, the other business. So I, I can see that they, they can Walmart assume has that liability. Uh, they, the gourmet Walmart company is right. did everything right because they already contract. have a relationship. Walmart is writing in their contract that the company that we're doing business with that you know this you is a good business. Right. So if okay. if I sue, let's say I come in and I'm the lawyer of the pink sauce lady and I sue Walmart, Walmart is going to, in the discovery, Walmart is going to throw the other company under the bus and say, right, hey, and no, say, no, no, actually. We did business with them. You did, we did business, business with, with the them company. It's via not wholesale. Issue. They yeah. did like what they um negotiation what they got going on ain't got nothing to do with us. So Walmart they got their stuff yeah. in intact, but they're still, you know, they still play a role in this. I didn't yeah. like I See, said, I didn't know about the hundred and twenty thousand. It seems it seems like it's like what she's saying happened is a harder way to take advantage of her. The easier so, way to take advantage of her would be to say. We're going to pay you $120,000 up front and X amount royalties if you sign. So did she, system. let me ask you this. Did she sense. say, did she say they paid her $120,000 or did the company say they paid $120,000? The, the company. From, from what I saw, the company said it. And the, the oh, publication okay. so, that the company said, they sent I, the publication. I don't know. How, I'm, I'm going to say this. Based on the conversation I had with her, I don't know how true that is mm -hmm. um, because the reason she started to go fund me is because she was struggling financially and had some real troubles. Well, I mean, um, I, I got that, but could could you conceive, so, could, hold on, can you conceive a possibility that she was paid $120,000 and she just spent the money? Can you, can you conceive a reality where... She actually did get this money and she still broke because the money was spent. Could that be possible? Yes, that's that's very possible. Um, like I said, I didn't hear any of that, but you, uh, again, you're never gonna hear the full story. Of course, because yeah. then some then it side. might be it might be a it might be a oh, I upgraded my car and ain't tell nobody, or it might be something crazy in there yeah. that went under the rug until legal documents actually come out. However, um, based on the conversation I had, it was she was promised a royalty, um, mm -hmm. and promised all of these good things like 120 and all of this, but basically the company reneged on all of that mm -hmm. and now they're trying to get then they went out and sold the product it did right. really well and now they're trying to negotiate and say oh we don't want to give you this amount of royalty we want to give you a very very lower percentage of that and because she's broke and she's desperate she's going to most most likely have to take that because she can't take them to court that's my understanding of it okay um but she raised the GoFundMe. She says Kyrie Irving gave her twenty five thousand. I don't know how much he raised. No, um, I, saw, I, I did see on her GoFundMe that someone who claims the name Kyrie Irving paid her like twenty four, a little over twenty four thousand dollars. So she got so that it. That might have been Kyrie yeah. does that a lot. I, I yeah. have posted about that before, so that might be legit. But mm -hmm. my question is, all right. The company's saying they paid 120. She's saying she didn't receive it. But right. there also was supposed to be some royalties that's that's going on. Unless she just said, I take the 120 and I don't get no royalty. Without my understanding was I supposed to get a royalty on these deals. Mm -hmm. Um, and the company basically realized that oh, she ain't got a trademark, she ain't got this, she ain't got that. So my understanding is they're daring her to actually have her paperwork together. And you already know 99% of black businesses, 
don't got their paperwork together because that's not yeah. what that's not popular. And the yeah, first thing you I mean, make, I see yeah. that, but uh, my skepticism is this. This is where my skepticism on her side is. I feel like they're doing a whole lot of work to try to defraud her when it would be easier just to give her two hundred thousand dollars and have her sign a piece of paper and and get over on her legally. Like why? But why would I, I don't jump think, through I don't all think those so. hoops? I don't to think try so. to Here's take advantage why. of her when I could take advantage of her legally by just having her sign a piece of paper for two hundred thousand dollars. Here's why: because, and this is uh, again, all small business owner needs to listen to this. What they could do is take advantage of her, don't give her no money, and then they, if she sue, if she can scrap up enough money to sue, then they can just settle with her with a lesser amount because she don't have no money to go to trial. She can sue and try to get a hope to get a settlement, but she would need a couple hundred thousand dollars to actually take this company to trial because they can stretch mm -hmm. trial out over two, three years, right? Yeah. And just force you to say, yeah, we owe you a million. Take this 400000 Companies do it all the time. Big companies, they know you don't have the money, so they're going to do that. I'm not defending her. I'm defending small businesses who justify buying a G-Wagon and all of this other stuff before lawyer fees. And Jay-Z has a famous right. line, chains are cool to cop, but what's important is lawyer fees. I yeah. learned a very important lesson around that, so I'm really passionate about this because... Uh -huh. If it wasn't for some of the moves I made, I could have been taken advantage of. But I put myself in a position and I had a few different assets that I was able to liquidate. So now I was in position to say, mm -hmm. hey, we might not be apples to apples, but I at least got enough money to go to court for two years. So in case something pop up, yeah. In case something go down. So they're like, all right, whatever, let's figure out a better solution for this. Mm -hmm. I All right, so let, let's do this. Let's do this. Because it looks like th there's more to this story. Whenever you do make that post, do me a favor, please. Just e either email it to me, I DM me so I can share it. And I want to follow this story because if it is what she say it is, it's an even more amazing story. She might get the really big bag because if enough people find out and they're able to fund her legal fees, this is going to be an even better story. So Please keep me up to date. Uh, I'm going to make sure it's, it's Black Millionaires on Instagram, right? Yeah. All right. I, I think I already follow you, but if I don't, I will be tonight. And I'm going to try to make sure that I share any developments uh, that you have with my audience, man. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I'll, if I speak to her again, I'm not sure if I am. Um, if I do, uh -huh. I'll let her know. I'll even try to. I don't know if you would want to have her to come and explain her story. Of I don't course, know listen, if she's willing to come on Pocket Watching with JT, you let her know. I'll, Open invitation. I'll try to, I'll try to yeah. set that up. But yeah. again, I, I'm going to also do some more research and rewatch this video and mm -hmm. go look up some of the, um, I'm going to go look up some of the, the, uh, the articles that the other company put out to yeah. see how legit this is and try to catch, you know, yeah, if I mean, I they, can... hey, the, the company's talking big. They said they paid her 120,000. They said they had proof the publication that they spoke with. They said they sent the actual bank statements. They even said that they're willing to reimburse her any lawyer fees that she would need to better understand the contract that she signed. So mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's anywhere close to the story that she's saying, I want to know. Yeah. All right. I'm going I'm to I'm do right. some more research and find out because I also they also said they would try to reimburse her for housing expenses. So I feel like they're really trying to take advantage of her. But mm -hmm. she might have signed a deal and signed all her rights away and just don't know it because, you know, most people are ignorant at how the law works and business and this and that. So yeah. both. I. I feel like it's a, a 120,000 is a lot of money to leave out in the conversation talking to somebody. So that's already yeah. a red flag. <laughs> yeah. But but if if that can be cleared up, she might yeah. have a case, but she now now she got to go find 120,000 to try to take it to court and I don't know if she's going to have the ability to do that based yeah. on some of the based on the conversation we had because 
I, you know, when I brought up getting a job or this and that, it was hell no. So I, I'm like, <laughs> and that's know, the so problem. I'm, that's the that, problem. That's a right huge there. problem. That that's a huge problem. Um, so I mean, I wish her the best. I'm gonna try to do what I can do with my platform to help her. Um, uh, but you hey, know, and if, I'm if, gonna get more to the story. If any of this is true, I'm gonna try to help her from my platform if I feel like she's it's legitimate. She didn't have a contract. She had a letter of intent, and they just ran off with the sauce. If that's true, I want to promote that and let people know because obviously we want to fight for small businesses. I just want to make sure everything's on the up and up because from her point of view, maybe a little different than what reality is. Yeah. And um, I mean, I just know these big companies, they're, they're not angels either. Like they do this all the time. Yeah. They take oh, advantage yeah. of, they yeah, take they advantage of, and, and they dare you to, they dare you to sue them and then they just settle it out in court. Um, they yeah. do it all the time because they got, you know, all the best lawyers in the game and they know, you ain't got the money because you've been blowing all your money stunting on the gram. That's the reason you can't build a business is because you stunting on the gram, you know, trying to be, um, you know, an influencer and, yeah. you know, most influencers are broke. So. Absolutely. All right, my brother, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Everybody. If you on Instagram, go follow black millionaires on Instagram. I'm going to be following black, uh, millionaires. If I'm not already, I think I am already, but I'm gonna make sure I check them out. Hey, listen, the pocket watch is out. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Uh, we are working hard to get to 100,000 subscribers. So do me a favor. If you are not already subscribed, subscribe to pocket watching with JT, hit the like button, share the content. Y'all have a great weekend. The pocket watcher is out. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Double check that. That's eh, pretty good. <whistles> Yeesh. Uh -huh. Not crying, are you? Let's tighten that. And... Ooh. Wait, 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 what was that? Huh? What? That? No, don't worry about that. Here we go. Asking the right question can greatly impact your future. Are, are you qualified to do this? What? Especially when it comes to your finances. Do you have a question? Are you a certified financial planner? Yes. I'm a CFP professional. CFP professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. Find your CFP professional at letsmakeaplan.org.